Hello guys, welcome to AI Sciences. I am your instructor Sajad Mustafa and today we are going to learn a very cool thing called Gradio. Gradio is a Python library that helps you build a very cool graphical user interface for your simple Python functions. I mean, we are all already familiar uh, how can we write up how 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 can we write python function if if you're not familiar with that you can check out our complete course on python in which we have explained each and everything in depth um the link is in description you can check out the you can check out the website and the course is available on that website and also if you're new to artificial intelligence you can check out a lot of courses that are available on the website great okay so um uh, we know how can we write Python functions. Uh, Python functions have have some parameters, and it is really a sort of a hectic thing for uh, for a non-technical person or even a technical person to, in order to write all of the parameters uh, for the Python function. So let's create a graphical user interface, a GUI for the parameters of Python function, and also a GUI for the uh, for the returned thing of the Python functions, right? So I know this thing is not making a lot of sense right now, so let's wait for just for a while. So first of all, we will um, talk about the installation and documentation, and then we'll see how can we build graphical user interface for functions that take input as a num that take number as an input, and also that take text as an input, and also for those functions who take images as the as the input and also it uh, some functions output take take numbers they output text some functions take images they also output images right so we will also take care of all all of these things right <laughs> So let's go towards the documentation. Um, so yeah, so this is sort of uh, a GUI that that you can create by using this library. And simple, you you all you have to do is you have to write pip install radio, and the magic will happen, right? So let's let's jump into the code. So this I've already installed it pip install radio. So I'm not going to install it. You guys have to install if you have not installed it yet. So let's get started so if we'll say so let's, let's first of all let's import radio as gr right and then um first of all we have to have a function function right so we'll say we'll define a function um that will say let's say greet okay and here we'll pass the name this is probably the simplest simplest code that we are going to write so we'll say um R E T U R yeah return so first of all we'll say hello and then we'll also um, uh, write the name of of the guy that is passed to this function right and then some ex followed by some exclamation marks um, yeah that's about it now the the real thing is so um, first of all we'll declare the interface so we'll say I face interface or I face whatever. So here we'll say gr dot gr is that radio, right? So gr dot interface and in interface it has three parameters. First of all, the function and function name is greet, right? Uh, remember, we don't have to write these parentheses over here, right? So we all we just have to write the function name over here. The second thing is inputs. So what are the inputs, not inputs? Okay, so what are the inputs of this function? Um, since we are going to uh, uh, enter text into, into this function, so we'll see, uh, we are going to add text into, the, into this function. And what are the outputs of the function? Um, the output of our function is again, text right so the parameter of this function is name name is a text so we have written text over here it also returns text um, a, a string to us which is a text so output equals to text so it has basically three parameters function input and output okay um, yeah that's about it our interface is ready all we have to do is we have to launch it right so l a u n c h so let's run it it will take just a few seconds and you'll see a very cool interface over here yeah great so this is the simplest function that we have written by by probably three or four lines so it will take a name let's say 
um, let's add a name my name is yeah Sajad so let me submit it so it says hello Sajad but there is no space over here I mean you can add space over here as well so uh, now now uh, right now let's not uh, talk about this flag thing I'll talk about it later so um, this is how you can clear it you can add your name as well what is your name let's say James submit hello James but no space over here okay so yeah that's that's about it now um, le let's uh, r let's make a very very simple game let's make a game so and also make a GUI for that game as well it will be a very simple game so we'll say random um, and the game the name of the game would be let's say guess the number right it will take number as an input and first of all we will generate a number um, a random number which would be random dot brand end from 1 to 5 right so it will generate a random number from 1 to 5 and then we'll say if random number equal equals to the number that is passed to this function then return a string that says you one the um, the number is and here we are going to say uh, we are going to convert the number into string and we are say we'll say um, random number okay so we'll say so if you have guessed the number right if you have passed the right number to this function we'll say you won uh, I mean you win the game and the number is this number right and also otherwise what we'll say exactly the same thing but only one thing will be changed which is you lost so if you are not able to guess the right number it will say you lost right so yeah that's that's a simple game um, so uh, now, now let's let's create an interface for it so I face equals to gr dot interface right what is the first thing first thing is a function name which is guess the number second thing is inputs what are the input input is a number right what is the second thing which is output right and outputs is text there can be multiple outputs as well so since we are we are entering or we are passing a number into it as a parameter it is returning a string to us that's why input is a number and output is a text right and here one more thing we will say allow flagging equals to never so remember that annoying flag thing we are going to uh, we are going to remove it for now uh, again this is not annoying uh, in um, in a while I'll let you know the usage of this thing it is a very useful thing sometimes okay so yeah we are almost done all we have to do is what we have to launch it launch right so let's run it and see how it looks like okay where is interface yeah here it is so here I have to pass the number so let's say my number is 2 so if I submit it it says you lost the number is one so if I uh, submit it again it says again you lost number is four it says okay you won the number is five so since the range of number is from one to five so there is one by five chances that I'll always win so if I run it again it says number is four so let's say if I type three over here it says no it's two now so yeah that's how you can create an interface you can also clear your um, input and output field as well so yeah okay so the next thing is now we are going to um, we are going to see how can we pass um, an image into um, uh, how, how can we create a graphical user interface to pass an image into a function so let's say let's define a function sep um, sepia right and here we'll say input image right so it will receive an image uh, one more thing that we need for this is import 
numpy as np okay so this uh, this uh, function will, will receive an image and it will convert that image uh, i mean it will um, it will add a filter a sepia filter into that image and also one more um, very cool thing that you will see when you will upload the image it will also allow you to add a lot of editing options into it so let me write a little bit of code over here first so i'll say sepia filter equals to numpy dot array and here I am going to pass a list of three lists that will create the filter right so first of all 0 0.393 comma 0 point so I'm going to pause the video over here so that I'll, I'll write these boring things here it is so since our, our image is a color colored image RG, RGB image so this is how we can we can treat with it so um, I mean these are some hard coded values that I have just copied from uh, from from Google and the next thing is because our, our aim is not to study about the sepia filter our aim is to study about the radio or graphical user interface so uh, sepia image equals to input image oh, not input Okay, input oh yeah input image and input image we will take the dot product of input image and then we'll say sepia filter and we'll take the transpose of it right and then we'll say sepia image right we'll divide and equalize it with sepia image dot max right so we are normalizing it over here and then we'll say return sepia image yeah that's about it so this will receive an image a simple image a colored image and it will return it with us with a filter implemented on it and filter is called a sepia filter now the thing we always do is let's create an interface gr gr dot interface first thing first let's pass the function name which is set yeah right and then um we'll say gr dot inputs dot image yeah so we we want to pass image as an input and image shape would be um let's say 200 by 200 right it will it will automatically normalize it and then um, here we, we are going to say uh, we are going to expect image as an output right and yeah that's about it so I face dot launch see let's run it it says no there are some 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 errors over here this is a positional variable keyword okay so uh, yeah I think we have to we have to write this outputs over here um, mm -hmm -hmm. outputs equals to this no uh, what sort of error it is let's see okay so yeah we we have some issue with positions over here so since we are not going to uh, write the positional arguments over here so let's remove that as well and let's run it so yeah looks fine we are uh, going to pass it into sepia function inputs would be an image and output would be again an image so here you can see that I mean with just um, um, effectively with just one line of code we have created all this UI right so let's click on this image and let's upload this image now the cool thing is that I promised you if you will click on this um, edit button you will be able to edit this image in a lot of ways um, you can crop your image you can flip your image I mean like uh, flip on x-axis or y-axis whatever you want you can rotate your image you can draw something on your image uh, in different colors you can add some shapes on your image you can add icon text and mask and wh wh what not I mean a lot of things right so so yeah it, it also provides you an editing option as well okay apart from that now let's submit it 
and here you can see that it outputs uh, another image which comes from this function right it returns from here and it shows over here and now now let's talk about this flag function um, one more thing um, now consider the applications of this this gradio thing for example you're working on object detection app you pass an image to this function some some object detection object detection function and this function will return the name of objects that are available in that in that image how cool is this right so okay so now let's talk about this flag thing um, by the way you can um, you, you can have multiple options in, in flag as well uh, how can you add multiple option as as flag right so let me show you over here so let's say flagging options and here you can pass a list of options right so let's say you can pass true, you can pass false, you can pass um, I don't know or whatever, right? So I mean you can pass a lot of options into it. So let, let me run it again. And still we don't know the usage of flagging, right? So I'm going to tell it right now. Let me just run it, let me upload an image. Um, sorry, upload an image submit it and here you can see that under the flag now it is a drop down you have multiple options you you can either flag it as false you can flag it as true you can flag it as i don't know right now what happens let's say you are writing a machine learning code or artificial intelligence code and let's say um uh, you are right for example let's ta take an example of uh, face detection app right so you upload an image in, in testing phase you upload let's say an image of, of a person uh, of pers image of face of a person and it outputs that if it is um, a person X or not right so here you can flag it uh, if that prediction is true or false and later on you can you can get the the logs of this flagging so let's say how can we get it so let's say flag let's search flag over here and here here you can see that if you you um, just don't want to see that flag button all you can do is allow flagging equals to never right and here here you can see that you can read all uh, the things about flagging over here um, I mean uh, that's how you can add the logs dot CSV to uh, in order to to get the flags right and this is how you will get the flags.csv in and in in flags.csv you will get uh, what flags did you did you set for for your um, relevant images or relevant outputs specifically um, again this is a huge library and very very beneficial library um, in in one video obviously I'll not be able to cover everything but I would highly recommend you to read the documentations about this library um, I mean if you want uh, some non-technical person or even clients to use your code and you don't want to write a lot of GUI and stuff like that especially for demo purposes this is the most beautiful thing I have come up come across yet so very little effort and a very beautiful thing that will be produced so I'm signing off by saying that please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any video we upload two videos every week Monday on Monday and Wednesday so stay tuned, thank you very much.